Uh, yes, so my name is Phil Stearns. I'm currently a PhD candidate at the University of California, Riverside. And I study shark morphology or shark biomechanics, if everyone understands that. But basically why sharks look the way they do. Yeah, that's a great question. So recently there was a paper that came out saying, you know, we're in this drone revolution of shark science. So the drones give you this new perspective where you're flying above the shark, but the shark doesn't know that. And, the, and if there's no like, you know, artificial boats in the water, no other things that are going to affect this behavior, such as when people chum to bring sharks to the boat. This is just looking at the shark from above. So you're getting the shark in its normal behavior, natural behavior, not being disturbed in any way. And it's giving us so much new data and observations we didn't previously have. So it's completely changed the game because we're doing something that doesn't affect the shark. And it's just giving us a new visual, you know, new idea of, okay, what's the shark actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis? We can follow it along for hours upon hours if need be. Of course, you have to have a lot of batteries, but it's just, it's a great way to just see natural shark behavior in its habitat. Yeah, so we were actually on the beach um, flying drones that day. So Carlos and I were sitting there doing our uh, usual protocol where we launch the drone from the beach and we'll fly it over the water and then we'll follow sharks throughout the day. And uh, we'd been doing it for about eight hours at that point. We'd seen a lot of interesting things. We'd seen the sharks swim close to swimmers, unsuspecting swimmers. We saw a shark that actually had some fishing gear still stuck in its mouth. So that was unfortunate. But towards the end of the day, um, we'd seen a large shark a large girthy shark swimming around kind of weird. And then it dove down and we were like, okay, that's weird. And then a little bit later after that, we saw this like white looking great white shark up here. And we were like, whoa. So that was uh, quite the moment. We were like, that's really cool. So it was uh, exciting, I'd like to say. You know, the key thing that we like to reiterate for our papers, we give the scientific community and the public two hypotheses. So we are not definitively saying it is one or the other, but we're giving you the options to evaluate it for yourself. So in the first case, it is a newborn shark. Well, research back in the 80s had already suggested that the coastal area of Southern California, all the way down to Baja, California, would be a birthing location for white sharks. We had seen this, we'd seen large white sharks being caught. This was back in the 80s. And then we'd also seen very young sharks being caught. Recent data has actually supported this. We have tagged, other research teams have tagged countless young white sharks very close to shore. So we see that very clear. No one's going to argue that. So what's interesting is in the days leading up to this day, you know, Carlos had seen these very large white sharks swimming around in this area. So I thought, okay, that's very interesting. So I happened to go with him that day because we want to go continue this expedition and the expeditions he does. And I was there. And again, we'd seen these large white sharks in the area. So I'm like, okay, that's very telling. And then not long after that, this shark comes up and it's very white. I'm like, okay, it's either an albino, but then we realized it wasn't an albino. So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. But as someone who studies shark morphology, why sharks look the way they do, I noticed that this looks like a very, very young white shark, just the way it looked overall. So I thought that was, okay, that means it's a young white shark. And then when you go back and realize while sharks are, in this case, pregnant, they produce something called a milk, this white milky substance for their embryos to actually uh, consume as like a uh, nutrient source. So I'm like, okay, they produce a milky substance. I wonder, it is a very young white shark. Is it possible this thing is actually a newborn that's got a white substance left over from being inside its mother uterus adhered to it? So I'm like, okay, that seems to add up. You know, the research from the 80s suggested it. The overall shark looks like a young white shark. Its length is actually that of a newborn size. So one or 1.5 meters, which equates to five feet. So it all fits that. So I'm like, okay, you take A, B, and C. It seems to add up to it. It could be very well be a newborn shark. So that's one scenario. And the other scenario... There are skin disorders that occur in sharks, but it's very, you know, either poorly sampled or it just doesn't happen that often. So it could be a skin condition. If it is a skin condition, you know, what the heck is going on with the shark? What is happening? So why does it look the way it does? So, and also the shark might need a dermatologist, I might add, if it does have a skin condition. So 
it's, um, you know, again, the skin conditions of a, a completely open avenue. It's almost that there's more points that add up to it being a newborn. But if it is a skin condition, that's also interesting in its owner because it's never been documented before. Nowhere else has anyone come up with anything very similar. So both situations are very peculiar, we might add. But again, further evidence and further documentation will answer either scenario.